We're here with Bishop John McIntyre. He's an auxiliary from Philadelphia and playing a key role in the organization of the World Meeting of Families that's taking place this September. Uh, Bishop John, thanks for joining us. Uh, I have to ask you right off the bat, how is it going? How is the preparations for this enormous event going? Thank you, Sebastian. Um, pleasure to be with you and thanks for your coverage and support of the World Meeting of Families. We really uh, appreciate it. I think things are going well. I think we're in a good place in terms of where we need to be right now with the planning for the world meeting and also the uh, papal uh, visit. There are a lot of, uh, I'd say, joys along the way in terms of people we've been able to assist in uh, participating in both the world meeting and the papal visit. And then also with any event of this magnitude, we've had our uh, challenges along the way. Um, transportation plans have been announced for public transportation, and I think it was a uh, sobering moment for people in the area in terms of what it'll involve to get uh, to a certain point and then from there to have to walk into Center City, Philadelphia. Uh, also, some of the security measures that have been put into place to protect all those who will attend and uh, to protect the Holy Father himself um, have been uh, you know, an eye-opener for, uh, for people. So I think we're going through a bit of a, you know, an education uh, as, as we continue to plan the event these last uh, 51 days, I think it is. I think we're 51 days out from the opening of the, of the world meeting. Now there are lots of people, individual families, entire diocesan communities, some parishes, but people coming from all over the world to participate in this, thousands of people. Um, f for those people, uh, what have you heard from them? Are they excited? Are they looking forward to coming? Uh, what's the vibe? What's the, uh, the emotion that they're feeling now? Sure, we have people coming from all over the place. Uh, as you just said, diocesan groups, parish groups, individual families, uh, people associated with ecclesial movements, and there's a great amount of, uh, I'd say, interest, enthusiasm, and excitement around both the World Meeting and the Papal uh, event. As you know, it's the first time that this event has been hosted by a, a North American city, so it's a, a unique event for all of North America, I think, and particularly for, the, for our own country, for the United States. So there's a great amount of interest in it and, uh, and enthusiasm. Um, I think we've tried our best to get information out about the uh, content and programming for the four-day Congress to let people know who will be speaking, what are the topics, uh, et cetera, et cetera, so people will know uh, what's being uh, presented. And we've tried to um, focus on the real life issues that families face uh, day in and day out and the manner in which Christ and his gospel shed light on those uh, issues and can guide and direct people. So I think we've, uh, uh, we've uh, done, a, done a good job and uh, people are uh, very interested and enthused about it. A lot of people that I've spoken to uh, who are coming to the World Meeting have, have spoken uh, wonderfully about the, catech the catechesis, the, mm. the book that was prepared mm -hmm. uh, for people as you know to look at and to study and to discuss before coming uh, to the World Meeting in preparation for it. Um, and I'm, uh, that's key, obviously. But once once the pilgrims get here, what are the kinds of things that will happen? Uh, that they can participate in the different events and such? Sure. The heart of the day, each day, will be Mass. Uh, after that, there is a keynote in the morning and a keynote in the afternoon, almost all of the days. And then after each keynote, there are 15, approximately 15 breakout sessions. We base the keynote talks on the themes of the catechism itself to further develop them. And then the breakout sessions are intended to break out or develop the keynote sessions themselves. So to, again, to further develop the the catechesis. Uh, throughout the day, there'll be an opportunity for people to pray before the Blessed Sacrament, to adore our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. There'll be a chance to celebrate the Sacrament of Penance. And in the evenings, uh, there are uh, a lot of events planned in and around the uh, city, everything from a film festival, choir, choir festivals, mass is celebrated for different language and ethnic groups. Um, there are a lot of historic uh, sites here in the city of Philadelphia related to the history of the United States and a lot of uh, Catholic uh, sites also. The Shrine of St. John Newman, the Shrine of St. Catherine Drexel, a lot of cultural institutions, everything from the Philadelphia Art Museum to the Barnes Museum with the, uh, with the uh, collection of Impressionist paintings uh, that are uh, there, the Franklin Institute, um, all those type of things, the Academy of Science who are working with us to develop exhibits for the people who will be visiting and also to extend their hours so people will have a chance to visit those, uh, those sites in the evening. One of the really, I, I would say, special things that is going on is an exhibit that we've been able to work out uh, to be displayed at uh, the Franklin Institute uh, entitled The Splendors of the Vatican. So we've worked with the Holy See to uh, have things sent from the Vatican Museum and, and other sources 
uh, to be on display in the uh, in the Franklin Institute. So a lot of lot of different things like that going on. Yeah, it was very exciting. Um, it takes an entire city, obviously, to pull something like this off. I mean, it's a Catholic event, but it's uh, it, everybody's getting caught up in it. Obviously, uh, what's the buzz around the city? We've had great, great support from the city itself, city government, and also on the state level, um, and also from our federal government, most especially in terms of security. Um, but there's, I say, there's a great uh, buzz or enthusiasm in the in the area, in the Delaware Valley, the uh, surrounding counties around the city, and also over in Jersey and in Delaware, uh, about the event uh, itself. Um, it's certainly a unique opportunity to host the World Meeting of Families, but also a unique uh, opportunity to have the Pope not just visit uh, the Archdiocese of Philadelphia and the city of Philadelphia, but really it's a visit for the for the whole region. So there's a uh, a lot of enthusiasm around it, and also a lot of people are planning because their lives will be uh, interrupted in major major ways for uh, two to three days while the Holy Father uh, is with us. What with road closures and security perimeters and things like that, so municipalities are beginning to prepare their people. I think one of the best examples or analogies that I heard was uh, in one of our uh, townships at uh, borders the uh, city the uh, officials the township officials are telling the people to treat it like a snow day you're not going to be able to travel like you normally do get your food in ahead of time and be prepared to uh, stay put unless you're going to go to one of the papal uh, papal event now despite all of the the chaos around a major event like this uh, the visit of the Holy Father can also have a powerful impact on a city, can, uh, transformative. We've seen it uh, a number of occasions whenever the Holy Father travels. Uh, that's also an element at play here. It, sh it sure is. Uh, two things come to mind. Uh, first of all, to actually see the Word of God uh, made real concrete right in our very midst as we see the ministry of Peter, the gift that was given to the church by uh, Christ, uh, actuated or made real right in our presence as the Holy Father is here to confirm the church in the United States, in North America, in this local church in Philadelphia, uh, in faith and in, in unity. And the other thing that comes to mind is my own experiences of bringing uh, young people to World Youth Days in Denver in 93 and then uh, Paris in 97 as uh, half a million people descended upon Denver in 93 and I forget how many in Paris. I think there was a million uh, people at the closing mass. It really does have a transformative effect on those, those cities. Uh, both big uh, metropolitan areas and uh, a bond uh, develops amongst all the people who uh, come to the uh, city and also I'd have to say with the residents who, uh, who live there. I remember going particularly to Denver, some of the experiences we had interacting with people from the city, how helpful they were, uh, how encouraging they were, um, but it really does form a bond amongst uh, the area and I think just the enthusiasm and the joy of the people who come with all the inconveniences they may experience and the bumps and the challenges really does have, as you said, a transformative effect on the, on the, the host city, the local community. Well, thank you very much for the work that you're doing to put this on. We know it's a, a heck of a lot of work and there's still much more to come, but it, it will be a wonderful, wonderful experience for everybody who's participating, I'm sure. Bishop John McIntyre, thank you very much. Thank you, Sebastian. We appreciate your support at uh, Salt and Light TV. Thanks very much.